Bows fired at Steve. Why is he the perpetrator? Did they not see where the tower could come from? Definitely not from him. He didn't even have his bow in his head. A few arrows hit and stuck to Steve as he runs to the nearest tent. He enters one, looking around for some kind of escape. Another arrow from the outside stabs his foot, causing him to wince in pain to stifle a scream. Using his diamond sword, he slips open an exit on the other side. Steve couldn't handle them all on his own. Maybe Alex can. Steve considered running off without her, but he couldn't. He had to check on her, to know if she was okay, if she was alive. Steve eats a steak and runs on the side of the tents, where the fight was the least dense. Alex was still shooting at the tribesmen, trying to hold them back. Steve runs behind one and swings at his neck, killing him instantly. Alex. Get the horses. He yells. Alex looks down and nods. She comes down from the bush, taking the route that she thought had the least activity. Steve stayed close to her, but the tribesmen outnumbered them heavily. There was no way in never that Steve could kill all of them. The warriors wield iron axes instead of their bows. Now that they were close, hand-to-hand -hand combat range, Steve had to think quickly. He looked around for Alex while he took out his diamond sword. Where was she now? Alex shoots down another couple of fighters before advancing towards the tent with their animals. All Alex could do is hope that Steve was okay where he was, which she seriously doubted. She rushes two men and single-handedly slices them to death. That better not have attracted attention, she thinks, getting nearer to the needed fence post. On the other side of the camp, Steve was dying. His health wouldn't go up past four hearts, even with his regeneration the second buff. He was simply overwhelmed. He was even afraid that his sword might be swatted from him. Steve had no choice but to evade their attacks. He sprints away for quite a distance. Eating a steak, he walks the perimeter of the camp, making sure not to get too far off as not to give the impression that he ran away. None of his enemies saw him. That is, except for one. Steve caught his breath and crouched in the leaves and foliage, trying to avoid the glares of his opposition. Steve bumps into something that fell down, getting in his way and nearly trampling him off of the tree. Stupid sheep. He whispers, swatting at the fluffy nuisance. B-A-A. It cries. In their foreign dialect, he calls the team to the sheep's direction. Three arrows fly into Steve's direction, all of them hitting the block of leaf above him. Alex bet be finished by now, Alex slashes the lead strings off of a horse and her dog, commanding her dog to sit up on the saddle behind her. Alex then takes the lead of the second horse and sets out to call Steve. It seemed as if the entire tribe was after him, even though she was the one that shot the arrow, I guess there's nothing much to lose at this point, she thinks. Steve. She shouts into the clatter of swords and bear strings. The dog behind her began to whimper, as if knowing that Steve was in severe pain, which he was. Steve. Come on. Her horses couldn't go past the leaves, so Alex hops off of her horse and heads to help him. Steve. She calls, trying to see him through the thick leaves. Steve. The horses are eddy. Suddenly, an arrow flies and nearly hits Alex in the head. She runs to the shooter and shanks him on the spot. It was a wonder how many warriors there were left to fight. How many total people were there, including civilians? Steve's helmet had already broken through the immense pressure and damage dealt to it. It seemed miraculous how his other articles of emery have survived everything else, especially his chest plate. He looks up and sees Alex coming down to help him, go, Alex. He says, swinging his sword, and missing, at an attacker. Take, the animals and go. Alex's eyes began to water. No, you are coming with me and that is final. She takes his arm and drags him along the ground. Steve wasn't doing well. His entire suit of emery that was remaining was covered in arrows, and his health had nearly reached zero. His hunger had also reached below sprinting power. Alex, I'm gonna die here. Just go without me. Be the hero, I don't care. Alex couldn't look back, not with all of the arrows flying in her direction. Is this what you wanted? You wanted me to die, and it'll be fine with me. As long as you save us from the Nedrigan, an arrow hit Steve's leggings, causing the iron to shatter. He yelps in pain as more tribesmen invade the surrounding leaf blocks. A best twangs in the distance, sounding more noticeable than all the other archers. 
The arrow lands straight in Alex's neck, causing her to fall down and let go of Steve. Alex, take the animals, go, I'll hold them off. She couldn't believe he was fighting for her, even if he had half a heart left, even if his diamond sword was about to break, and even if only had a chest plate and a pair of boots to protect him. He cared. A fighter jumps in between Steve on the ground and Alex. Panicking, Alex turns around and runs away before he could attack anyone. She picks up the lead of Steve's horse, founds her own and set it off to run down the hill and into the river. Looking up at the spot Steve was laying down at, Alex could see that no one was there. Everyone seemed to have disappeared from the scene, like invisibility had swept over them once Alex left the scene. Alex wouldn't look back. She couldn't if she tried.